Next up in our learning intentions, again, this is parts of fields and heats of reaction. It is also the introduction to our organic chemistry, which lays the groundwork for what we'll be doing a lot of in sixth year. So today we're going to look at aliphatic compounds. We're going to give examples, discuss aromatics and give examples of those. Aromatics are fantastic. We're going to talk about benzene and the fabulous chemical that is benzene and we're going to talk about bond lengths this is a bit tricky but once you go through it once or twice it'll make perfect sense so our aliphatics on the right hand side there there are four different examples of aliphatic compounds now having a look at them what are we seeing well we are seeing that they are compounds that consist of both open chains your ethene and your ethine and closed chain compounds cyclohexane there we go and cyclohexene so the hexene is on the left top with the double bond and cyclohexane on the right note the lack of double bonds so these open and closed chain compounds have similar chemical properties was our aromatics our aromatics are fantastic now any aromatic compound you see has to contain a benzene ring. The benzene ring there is on the bottom. You will see it's hexagon in shape. That means there's six carbons and the circle in the middle means that there are three double bonds. Okay, three double bonds. The reason that circle is there is to say that the double bonds do not remain in any one fixed place. Okay. C6H6 is the molecular formula for benzene. Where did it come from? Well, Mr. Faraday, as you can see there, fabulous picture of him. He had a look into benzene in 1825 and he noticed that it was unsaturated. But benzene was a weird one. In normal cases, you would have really good reactivity with double bonds. So in the alkenes or the alkynes, you would actually see really good reactivity. But with benzene, the reactivity wasn't what they expected, nor was the bond length. Again, you would assume that the bond lengths of benzene would have carbon to carbon, single bond, normal length, carbon, double bond carbon, bonding as a standard length but in fact this was not the case so it really kind of stumped them for a little while what they noticed is normally c one cs are extremely reactive but benzene as i said wasn't but why it's actually due to the fact that there's three double bonds those three double bonds as you can see there um are the reason why benzene is quite unreactive. In normal terms, what you would see is a single bond being longer than a double bond. But actually, when they got to measure all the bonds in a benzene, they noticed that all the bond lengths were exactly the same. But they weren't the length of a carbon-carbon single bond, nor were they the length of a carbon-carbon double bond they actually sat somewhere in between so if we have a difference there in bond length it says something is going on at a molecular level they figured out that in fact the electrons involved in bonding didn't just stay in one position they moved around the entire molecule so they moved around the carbons um, and we would call that to be delocalization so in this case the double bonds were delocalized over the entire molecule meaning that the effect moved throughout the entire molecule and that's why benzene is very unreactive so just be aware that in benzene the carbon to carbon bonds were in between the length of a carbon-carbon single bond and a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so that brings us back to our aliphatics 
or Ali Farix are open or closed chains. Aromatics have to contain a benzene. That's a three double bonds with the delocalized electrons, therefore accounting for its stability. We will have a look further on at this going down the line just to make you aware. Um, so if this is an issue, let me know.